Today we're taking a deep dive into the Blair Witch Project from 1999. Welcome back everyone, this is Mike from Fearshop.com. Today we're taking a deep dive into the Blair Witch Project from 1999. But before we do that, take care of some business here. I want you to smash that like button for me. I want you to leave comments uh, down below and let me know what types of videos you want. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that bell to set up notifications so you know when the next video drops. Now the Blair Witch Project, a, a film that altered most of what happened in 2000 in, in horror, right? The, the whole new century just became riddled with these found footage films. And you can pretty much, uh, you know, thank Blair Witch, either, you know, thank them for it or hate them for it. So Blair Witch Project 1999, American supernatural horror film written and directed by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. It's based on the purportedly true story of three students, filmmakers Heather Donahue, Michael C. Williams, and Joshua Leonard, who hike into Black Hills near Burkittsville, Maryland in 1994 to film a documentary about a local legend known as the Blair Witch. The three disappeared, but their equipment and footage is discovered a year later, and the recovered footage is the film that the viewer sees. Now, before we even really get into the film itself, I mean, the thing about the Blair Witch, it's less about the film actually more about the marketing that went into the film beforehand so you know the film itself you know, it was this 35 page screenplay developed by Merrick and Sanchez with the dialogue to be improvised right there was a casting call put out there they had a bunch of people come in Donahue Williams Leonard were eventually cast basically the film shot in eight days they had about 20 hours of footage they pared it down to 82 minutes there was an original budget of 35 to 60k when the Blair Witch premiered at the Sundance Film Festival at midnight on January 23rd of 1999 the promotional marketing campaign listed the actors as either missing or deceased you know after a successful run at Sundance artists and entertainment brought the film's distribution rights for 1.1 million the film got a limited theatrical release and then a wider theatrical release six months after that in July. So while the critical reception was mostly positive, audience was what well, was quite split. I, I don't know if they were really ready for the, the amount of shakiness in that shaky cam. It was a lot. It, it was it was a rough watch in the theater. Uh, you know, I watched it a couple times in the theater and each time it got a little bit better. And I still watch the film quite often, probably once a year doesn't bother me now, but I can see, you know, people watching for the first time be like, whoa, like, what the hell is, is this? So, you know, the, the, the same type of found footage te technique, which worked for Blair Witch, also worked for films like Paranormal Activity and Cloverfield. I mean, Blair Witch was a sleeper hit that started all that. You know, there's so many other films that, that came out of this i mean when you th when you think about some of the other films you know you got wreck you got the last exorcism troll hunter chronicle vhs uh the den it, it's so many other films and you know they were at least the good to decent movies for every one of those there were 10 movies that you wish were never shot on any type of video but you know basically the film heavily credited with reviving found footage right it's it wasn't the first film that did it obviously you know one of the bigger ones that people or one of the biggest ones i should say that people think about is cannibal holocaust which was filmed 19 years before that so it's definitely not the first film it is the most well-known film probably ever uh even even now like today even though paranormal activities is known pretty well i still think blair which has has a little bit of a bigger name than that one does so Basically, you know, like I said, the, the marketing of this film was all around, this is real, right? The three actors in the film actually didn't realize until after the film that even the legend was made up. They thought the legend was real. They knew the film would be fake, but they thought the legend was actually going to be real. Uh, it's, it, you know, one of the funny stories that Heather Donahue said when they brought them in to audition Basically, the two directors posed the question, you've served seven years of a nine-year sentence. 
what should we do? Like, why should we let you out of your parole? And then she had to respond. Joshua Leonard said he was cast due to his knowledge of how to work a camera since that was kind of going to be important for them. But even just that interview or the audition with, with Heather Donahue just showed that, you know, they, they were really putting a lot of faith into the characters to be able to ad lib a lot of this. So, you know, Blair Witch Project went viral before being viral was a thing. Right. It's just those those kinds of terms and things just didn't work. You know, the at festivals, there were people handing out flyers about these missing students. Right. IMDb page had the three actors uh, listed as missing, presumed dead for the first year after the film was released. Everybody that I went to watch the film with thought it was real. I tried to explain to them, like, do you think that they could really have found the footage and put this out in a widespread theatrical release of, you know, people dying? And, but people were like, no, they said it's real, so it has to be. You know, so it, it's, it's that whole mystique of why people wanted to see the film, because it was an experience, right? It wasn't just a film. It was definitely an experience, and it was something new. You know, we did a video a little ways back about like the faces of death, which is what was, you know, what's real versus what was staged for those films. The whole lore of things being real, it's just that little taboo that people want to uh, just be a part of. So uh, another film that used this type of marketing uh, work was Eli Roth's Cabin Fever from 2002. He cited Blair Witch Project's marketing campaign being a huge influence for that movie. Uh, Blair Witch Project was also in other types of media. There were books. Uh, in 1999, D.A. Stern compiled the Blair Witch Project, the dossier, which basically builds on the film's true story angle. And it has fabricated police reports and pictures and interviews. There was a series of eight young adult books entitled The Blair Witch Files, which were released by Random Subsidiary Bantam from 2000 to 2020, sorry, 2001. The book center on Cade Merrill, a fictional cousin of Heather Donahue, who investigates phenomena related to Blair Witch to try to find out what happened to Heather, Mike, and Josh. In comic books in July of 1999, Oni Press released a one-shot comic promoting the film titled The Blair Witch Project Number 1. Also, in October of 2000, coinciding with the release of Book of Shadows, Image Comics released a one-shot called Blair Witch Dark Testaments. In 2000, Gathering of Developers released a trilogy of computer games based on the film. Uh, there was a documentary in 2015 called The Woods Movie. It's a feature-length documentary exploring the production of The Blair Witch Project. There were also parodies. The Blair Witch Project had a bunch of them. So there was the Bogus Witch Project, the Tony Blair Witch Project, both in 2000, the Blair Thumb Project in 2001. Of course, there were also pornographic films called The Erotic Witch Project and The Bear Wench Project. The film also inspired the Halloween television special The Scooby-Doo Project, which aired during a Scooby-Doo Where Are You marathon on Cartoon Network on Halloween of 1999. A sequel entitled Book of Shadows was released on October 27th, 2000. It was poorly received by most critics. I know a lot of people, they call it the worst horror movie or the worst movie ever made. Uh, for a while, I was definitely, you know, riding that bus. You know, and I, I definitely enjoyed the movie. I don't, I think it's far from a horrible movie. Uh, it's just, if, if you detach it from how good Blair Witch was. It was a decent standalone movie on on its own merits. You know, I haven't seen it in a few years. I, I, I want to record one of those awesome or awful videos for it, so I do have to rewatch it again. But I used to actually champion that movie big time. So, uh, in 2016, there was a trailer, a surprise trailer, for The Blair Witch revealed at the San Diego Comic-Con. The film was originally marketed as The Woods to be an exclusive surprise announcement for those in attendance at the convention. Uh, the film is directed by Adam Wingard and is a direct sequel to The Blair Witch Project. It doesn't acknowledge the events of Book of Shadows, but it doesn't also disregard them, uh, just, just not mentioning them. So in 2017 and 2018, there was definitely talks about 
a Blair Witch television series. Nothing really materialized from that, which is somewhat surprising. Uh, films in the Guinness Book of World Records for top budget box office ratio. The film cost sixty thousand to make, made back two hundred forty eight million, so a ratio of one dollar spent for every ten thousand nine hundred and thirty one made. So, in the scene where the main actors are sleeping in the tent, the tent suddenly shakes violently and they all get scared. This was unscripted, and the director shook the tent. The actors were scared. Heather Donahue's mother received sympathy cards from people who believed that her daughter was actually dead or missing. You know, the directors kept in touch with the three actors via walkie-talkie to ensure that they wouldn't become lost. Reportedly, they got lost at least three times. One of the video cameras used by the actors was bought at Circuit City, and after film one was completed, they returned the camera back for a refund, making their budget go even a little bit further. Imagine being a person who bought the camera and you owned it for all those years and didn't even realize it was used for filming Blair Witch. So, to promote discord between the actors, the directors deliberately gave them less food each day of shooting. Uh, you know, they, basically the directors had kind of said, you know, we, we are worried about their safety, we're not worrying about their comfort. So... You know, the, the actors were requested to interview the town's folks who, unbeknownst to the actors, were planted by the directors. So the expression on the actors' faces were unrehearsed. Uh, Blair Witch was supposed to be seen in a movie. As the characters were running out to their tent, Heather yells, Oh God, what the F is that? The cameraman's supposed to pan to the left, where the audience would briefly see a woman wearing a white gown in the distance. But the cameraman forgot the pan, and the scene was not reshot. The film was, took eight days to shoot, but eight months to edit. Numerous fans were so convinced of Blair Witch's existence, they flocked to Maryland to, you know, in hopes of discovering the legend. They should have probably read the closing credits of the film. Crackling sounds in the woods were made by the director and friends walking up to the camp's perimeter, breaking sticks and tossing them in various directions. The actors really didn't know. Part of the problem that the film suffered, or I should say Burkittsville, the town, suffered was they just weren't ready for uh, that level of exposure. The sign for Burkittsville at the beginning of the movie was stolen three times. It was stolen the opening night of the movie. You know, uh, people would flock down there. They started taking pieces of, of the building as like souvenirs eventually. Like after that happened a few times. The town actually ordered that the, the building be demolished because they were just getting people to come in and just basically, you know, just purge pieces off. It was crazy. Uh, the sounds that the children heard at night were taken from kids playing around the house of director Eduardo Sanchez's mother. The tape was played over boom boxes, and according to Michael C. Williams, he found it the scariest scene to shoot in the film. In the movie, Heather and Mike share a somewhat antagonistic uh, attitude towards each other. In the commentary, the directors revealed it was Heather and Josh who were arguing most of the time and more heatedly. Almost all of the footage of their arguments was taken from the final cut after the filmmakers decided it seemed like both men were ganging up on Heather. The actors were given no more than that 35-page outline. You know, it was basically the mythology behind the plot, and all the lines are improvised. Nearly all the events in the film were unknown to the three actors beforehand, and there were often on-camera surprises to them all. That's, I think, what led to a lot of the real-looking reactions, because they were real reactions. Uh, Heather Donahue admitted that there was a considerable backlash against her because of her association with the Blair Witch Project. It led to her having threatening encounters, and difficulty finding other employment. So, to maintain the film's fear factor, the three actors agreed to stay in character for the entire eight days of filming. Periodically, if an actor had to break from character, then the remaining two also had to break from character, but only after collectively reciting their safety word of taco. The reactions from Heather, Mike, and Josh, and what they discover uh, when they were walking south all day and ended up in the same spot are real. They were genuinely upset that they had walked all day for nothing. Heather, Mike, and Josh were under strict instructions to follow trails and directions given to them by the movie crew to ensure they would reach each designated camp to uh, in time for the night. 
Heather Donahue told Fangoria Magazine that the final seal scene was so terrifying to her, she kept hyperventilating and crying long after the shoot was over. Many of the Futhark runes seen in the old houses are reversed, which has a special meaning. A reverse rune implies a dark or negative fate for the person who reads them. The final day of shooting took place on Halloween night. The crew planned on wrapping up one day before, but the camera ran out of batteries due to the camera light, requiring an additional day of shooting. Apparently, Heather Donahue brought a knife into the forest while filming was taking place because she didn't like the idea of sleeping with two guys. The 1999-2000 hunting season suffered badly due to this film. The movie was so popular that fans all over the country were hiking into the wilderness to shoot their own Blair Witch-style documentaries. As a result, they kept most of the wildlife scared away from the hunting areas. The first cut of the movie was screened was 2.5 hours in length. Uh, the 16 millimeter camera used to film the documentary and the black and white scenes in the film was sold on eBay following the completion of the film. Sanchez and Merrick wanted Heather to have a sort of Captain Ahab quality, obsessively documenting everything. Heather Donahue had that. Mike's function in the film is to say the things that audience is probably thinking, and Josh, for a time, is a team peacekeeper. At 85% is the highest score on Rotten Tomatoes for any film that was nominated for the Razzie Award for the Worst Picture. In the initial draft, Josh was intended to have a strong romantic interest in Heather. In several of the scene instructions given to the actors in callback auditions, it was instructed that Josh take note of how attractive Heather was and how dejected he should be that she seemed oblivious to this. Eventually, the scene was scrapped and feared that the movie would become too cliché. Heather Donahue mentioned to Fangoria that the first question was asked from the director uh, upon arriving on set was if he was planning on making a snuff film. The first title for the movie was The Blair Witch Tapes. The working title was The Blair, Wick, Blair Hills Project. Merrick and Sanchez admitted that they had to tone down some of the outbursts from Heather, Mike, and Josh. They instead allowed them to accumulate in smaller doses. The film held the record for the highest grossing independent movie of all time until October 2002 when it was surpassed by My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Some theater goers experienced nausea from the handheld camera movements and actually had to leave to vomit. All three actors were required to sign a release granting a production permission to mess with your head. Probably the most powerful example is the late night tent attack. On the set of Pulp Fiction in 1994, actor Bruce Willis may have predicted the success of the movie five years prior to its release. He said, someday in the next five years, someone's going to take one of these and make a feature film with it. They almost did it with uh, Bob Roberts from 1992. Some kid, some 17-year-old, is going to make this killer drop-dead, poorly lit video movie that is going to be the hippest thing. And then there's going to be hundreds of them everywhere, and they're going to cost about 60000 He also suggested to director Quentin Tarantino that he be the one to create this video movie that would change the world. So there you go, an interesting fact there. So that about wraps this video up. I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on a Blair Witch. Let me know how many of these facts you, you knew, which ones of these were, were new to you. You know, I had a lot of fun researching this film. You know, Blair Witch Project is definitely in like my top something or other. Maybe top 10, definitely top 20 of horror movies. Just one of those films that, you know, just came out and just changed the game. Changed the game for horror, changed the game for me. And definitely had a lasting impact. So, that's it for this video. Make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you're leaving your comments. Make sure you set up notifications. But most of all, make sure you keep it hard. <laughs>